joy. God's great joy. Amen. Psalms 126, beginning at verse 1. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our laugh and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we were glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Our subject this morning is unusual joy, unusual joy. A friend of mine, J. Howard Oles, shared this sermon with me, and I thought it would be a blessing to you this morning. Let us pray. Father, I decrease that the Holy Spirit might increase. Speak through my vocal cords, think through my mind. Father, your word is anointed. It shall not return to your void, but it shall accomplish everything that you send it out to do. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. It is in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said amen and amen. Well, it's the Christmas season on television. Marilyn and I have been watching uh, Dr. Zeus's Christmas story. And in this Christmas story, there is a character called the Grinch. Uh, he is a small hearted and goes about stealing food and toys from all the Who's in Who'sville in an effort to try to curb their Christmas joy. Yet on Christmas morn, the tall and the small sang without any presence at all. And this is what the narrator said in that movie. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling, how could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, is a whole lot more. <laughs> unusual joy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Joy, you see, is much more than pleasure or fun. Joy is divinity dancing to a new drum. Joy is gratefulness for the greatest of gifts. Joy is sorrow that we know turns to bliss. Joy is the glory of God now on earth. Joy is the amen of a spiritual new birth. Let the psalmist help us explain it. Let the church gladly proclaim it. Let the amen sound from God's people again. Let God's people say amen. The word for joy in worship this morning is amen. So be it. So be it so more it be. Amen is a word of great joy, unusual joy, because it is joy that originates from God through your spirit to your heart and then out toward the world. Joy. Let's look at some ways this morning that this unusual joy comes. Joy, unusual joy comes to those who dream. Listen again to verse one and two of Psalms 126. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. 
Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. When our minds are full of dreams, let God's people say, amen. I don't know about you, but I understand that a dream is a vision not yet fulfilled. A dream is an answer from God about the questions you're praying about. A dream is a vision, an idea that God gives to God's people when they are in most cases oppressed, depressed, suffering, in turmoil, and they go to sleep with their minds bogged down in care, and all of a sudden, they have a dream. But you know how a dream is. If you don't put a plan to the dream, that dream will not be fulfilled. And part of the plan is to have joy down in your soul that God has shown you not where you are, but where you can be if you apply the vision he has given to you. There's a whole lot of things going on right now, but never let what is going on cause you to cease to dream of a new day, of a new season, of a new hope, of a new life. There is a new day coming in Jesus because Jesus is joy. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. And so in the movie, you remember the movie on the miracle on 34th Street, Santa Claus is put on trial in New York City for spreading cheer and goodwill among people. His principles of consideration and cooperation seem threatening in a world of competition. And as the charges are leveled and the trial begins, the defense lawyer is challenged by his girlfriend. Why risk your job, your reputation, your standing in society in a silly pursuit to prove the existence of Santa Claus? The determined attorney replies, because it's more than Santa Claus on trial. It's love, hope, peace, fairness, and goodwill on the witness stand. And he said, I intend to defend these principles in the courtroom of humanity. Yes, there's more on trial today than our response to the pandemic. There's more on trial today to our rejoicing about a new president being uh, sworn in on January 20th. There's more at stake than just voting Democrat or Republican in the Senate runoff in Georgia. Yes, I dare say the principles of integrity, of righteousness, and of justice are on trial, and the people of God are called to show up in Georgia on January the 5th and vote to elect two senators so that the Senate will be controlled by the Democratic Party and perhaps the justice of God will come shining through. I don't know about you, but I, I look at things through a leadership bent and I, I see possibilities where others don't see possibilities. I see a goodness in people where others just see their faults and their weaknesses. I see potential in people who have been counted out. You will notice in John chapter one, when Jesus approaches Nathaniel and Andrew, his brother says, we have found the Messiah and, 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 and Nathaniel wants to know where he came from. And, 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 and Andrew says he came from Nazareth. And Nazareth has such a bad reputation. It was the hood of Bethlehem. I, I just want to tell you, it was the hood. It was where the thugs hung out, the poor, the left out, the outcast. And, and, and Nathaniel asked his brother, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? I just want to put a pause here to tell you, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how you started in life. You can rise to a new potential when you dream. You dream big, you'll win big, but you'll also lose big on your way to winning big. In other words, it takes a mindset 
to achieve. And if you've always had a mindset of negativity, sometimes you got to dream bigger than the negative talk that is going on about you and around mm. you. You've got to know that you are a child of God, just mm. as everyone else is. And because you're a child of God, yes, you may be imperfect, but thank God for Jesus. Jesus Amen. brings me joy when I'm down and Jesus brings me joy when I'm up because when I go yeah. to bed at night, I can dream a new dream for my life and my family's life and the world will be better because God has given me joy. Unusual. Amen. Because you have unusual joy when the world is trying to knock you down. Uh -huh. You have unusual joy when folk talk more bad about you than good about you, you have unusual joy when you've got a smile on your face against the oppression and the opposition of others. You've got to have a joy. Uh, Mama used to say, I got joy that the world didn't give and the yeah. world can't take away. Your mama used to say, you can talk about me as much as you please. Long as you talk about me, I'm going to get down on my knee because yes. I got joy unspeakable and oh. full of glory. Somebody this morning ought to have a dream. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord. Annie Johnson Flint wrote a poem about it a few years ago. And it read, I've dreamed many dreams that never came to true. I've seen them vanish at dawn. But I've realized enough of my dreams, thank God, to make me want to dream on. I've prayed many prayers when no answer came, when my hopes and faith were almost gone. But answers have come to enough of my prayers to make me keep praying on. Hallelujah. I've dreamed the cup of disappointment and I've drained the cup of disappointment and pain. I've gone many days without a song, but I've sipped enough nectar from the roses of life to make me want to dream on. Joy comes to those who dream, but not only does joy come to those who can dream a new situation, a new standing in their lives. Joy secondly comes to those who are grateful. Anybody oh, yeah. grateful this morning? Amen says you're grateful. Amen says uh, Marvin Sapp saying, I've got so much to be thankful for. Uh, somebody said down through the years, the Lord's been good to me. He brought me from a mighty long way, danger seen and unseen. The Lord's been good to me. And I know that a wretch like me can only respond to a God like that with thank you, hallelujah, praise your holy name. Because I've been in some places that I shouldn't have been, and I've experienced some things that I shouldn't experience. But God dispatched his angels to watch over me. God covered me in my foolishness, and God covered me when the world was against me. And because of God's being my shield and buckler, I can stand and say this morning that the Lord is a great God. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful when the enemy came in upon me and they thought they were going to get their hands wrapped around me. There was a loving God that made them stumble on each other and fall by the wayside because He's that kind of God. You ought to always have a praise in your mouth when you look back over your life. You ought to always have a praise on your lip when you know you've done some things that were wrong and you know you've been through some things because of your foolishness. It wasn't all, you know, the devil. Some of that stuff you did on your own and you reap the benefits of that. But God came yes, sir. in time and brought you a, 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 a blessing you would have room enough to receive. That's right, Cherie. Somebody say, but God, look That's beyond right. my faults and saw my every, every need. I, I want to tell you that life is not about you. It's what? not about your personal fulfillment, your personal yes. peace of mind, your yes. status in creation, or even your happiness. The chief 
end of human existence is to know God and enjoy God forever. Let me say it again. That's why you created to know God, your creator, and to enjoy God forever. Somebody sang a song back when I was growing up, enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah, I wonder this morning, is anybody enjoying Jesus while you're locked away in your living room? Anybody enjoying Jesus while you're driving down the highway by yourself? Anybody enjoying Jesus and watching Jesus move on your behalf? I tell you, when you're grateful, good things happen. When you're <laughs> grateful, listen, that, listen, listen, uh, what's that girl, Ja'Kayla Carr said, something big is going to happen, happen for you because you have a spirit of gratefulness oozing out of your being <laughs> and letting your light shine. All right, Reverend. Now, some people can't stand your light. <laughs> They're going to try to put your light out. <sighs> and you start to beam in the joy of the Lord. They're going to ask you who you think you are. You yeah. tell them, I don't think nothing. I know who I am. I am what? a child of the living God. I'm royalty. I'm a king's kid. I don't know <laughs> what you heard about me, but I'm going to tell you who I am. I mm -hmm. smile, and the songwriter says, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. I sing because I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied my every groan. That's why I can smile in the midnight hour. All yeah, right, right. That's why I can give God an amen. <laughs> that's why I can now. give God an amen. <laughs> ah, the lights may be out and the room may be cold, but there's a warm spirit over me. I'm mm -hmm. talking about a God who when the senior citizens can't pay their utility bill and temperature drops down to 30 degrees and they just got a little candle here and a blanket and a quilt over there. I know a God who will change the weather. He'll change the weather because big mama got down on her knees and said, Lord, I'm thankful despite the weather. I'm thankful despite the cold. And before you know it, God will send a warm breeze, raise that temperature up for a couple of days until big mama can get her utility bill paid or till God gets ready to show the world you meant it for evil, but I meant it for good. I, I'm glad that big mama knows I'm a weather changing God. <laughs> I can change the atmosphere. That's the kind of God we serve. I can stop a storm just like I can cause a storm. And when you're grateful, in whatever state you find yourself, you can have joy. Amen, amen. Let me move on here. Not only is it to those who dream and those who are grateful, but joy comes to those who grieve. Look here at verse five and six, I'm closing. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth weeping Bearing seed for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. There was a young girl about 15 years old named Marsha. She asked her mama, can we just skip Christmas this year? <laughs> you see, her parents divorced that year. Her dad had a new wife, her sisters had jobs, her brother was not coming home from college, her mother sat and stared into the wall a lot depressed. Christmas was coming and Marcia didn't want any part of it. You see, that's the kind of joy that the world gives. It is temporary based on circumstances. The joy that God gives. Yeah, the thing that separates Christian joy from cultural happiness is that joy acknowledges the pain. Yes. Ha happiness is circumstantial, but joy is everlasting. Oh, yeah. Ah, people who don't have the joy I'm talking about this morning, a few martinis and several bloody mirrors may make them merry. But joy does not come by drowning out your tears. 
Joy comes when you are crying. Joy comes and sits right next to you all through the night. Joy, joy is not a pious wish that things will get better. Joy is an abiding promise that God is with us. You yes. see, joy and sadness are part of the same dance, and you have to learn all the movements in order to live. You, you remember Fanny Crosby, uh, the great hymnist of the church, when she was only eight years old, she wrote, she wrote this little poem. Oh, what a happy child I am, although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. You see, my brothers and sisters, no trouble enjoys everlasting life. No sorrow lasts forever. Every pain has a lifespan. And there is healing for every heartache. Weeping, you know the scripture, may last for a night, but joy comes oh, no. in the morning. And, and, and we have yes. a promise from God. Even if this tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And when you can affirm that God is with you through the bad and through the good, you can look at your circumstances and just smile and say, amen. Amen. That's why sometimes the preacher is preaching. He can't get an amen. He'll say, amen, walls. <laughs> amen, light. <laughs> a amen, <laughs> communion table. Amen, angels. Amen. Because the preacher understands that it is not the response of the people, but it is the joy that comes with holding on to God's promise. Joy comes when God's glory fills the sky. And you know when that happens? When Jesus is preached, joy fills the sky. You remember what the angel said? Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a yes. Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's there in Luke 2 and 10. So joy is more than a three-letter word on the flap of a Christmas card. Joy <laughs> is an encounter with Jesus. Joy Amen. is the fact that Jesus came into the world and, yes, and Jesus yes, yes. did what God wanted him to do. I stopped by to tell you the key to joy. Yes, now, yes. The key to joy is accepting and praising God yes, for God's yes. will coming to pass in your life. Did you hear what I said? Yes. It is praising and thanking God when God's will comes to pass in your life. And Amen. Jesus says, listen, beloved, in yes. this life, you shall have tribulation, but be <laughs> of good cheer, be yeah. of good joy, for I have overcome the world. And because Jesus has overcome the world, now the world can't do you no harm because Jesus has overcome sin, death, and disease. None of that can do you any harm. And because Jesus defeated Satan on Calvary's cross. Even the devil can't do you no harm. You ought to have joy unspeakable. You ought to have that unusual joy that yeah. causes you to sing in <laughs> sickness and sing in the face of death and sing when the world wants you to cry. And even if you cry, sing anyhow. <laughs> because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes, sir. I've seen anybody strike up a hymn when they were in trouble and didn't receive the joy of the Lord. I've never seen anybody who, when they were sick and couldn't sing, but they put on a song in their living room and let the song sing on their behalf and didn't receive joy. Joy comes. <laughs> yes, That's why yes. we're celebrating this morning. Um, we're celebrating yes. joy during this Advent season, the yes, season of hope and expectation. Yes, what is your yeah. dream today? What yes, are sir. you dreaming your future will be? 
Don't <laughs> be sitting down in a pity party because of COVID-19. Don't Hallelujah. allow the circumstances yes. you yes. are in and the way the virus is raging to cause your joy to evaporate. Get a new dream for your life. <laughs> I'm closing now. I know my time is up. I'm watching my watch. <laughs> I remember I got to tell this testimony. All one right. Of members of my church from Jones Chapel CME Church, which was one of the first two churches I pastored beginning in 19. 92. All right. This lady went in the hospital and she had stomach cancer. They mm. needed to, to cut out some of her intestines and, and, and cut out uh, part of her stomach and, and she didn't have any taste and they put a, a bag uh, where her stomach was and they put a shunt in her shoulder because she couldn't receive food the normal way and I went to see this woman and, and this woman said, Reverend, I look pretty bad. I said, yeah, uh, you think you're going to make it out of here? And uh, she said, oh, I'm going to make it out of here. I said, well, how are you going to make it out of here? She said, because the God I serve has given me a dream. And in my dream, I see myself eating everything I love to eat. And I see myself giving praise to God. She yes. said, now, Reverend, this is what I want you to do every day until I get out of here. All I right. want you to come and I want you to read the book of Job to me. I said, All right. Job, she said, yeah, we're going to read the whole book of Job. And by the time you get through visiting me and praying and reading the book of Job, watch how God is going to move. <laughs> so I went there with very little faith. I was operating on her faith. And I would read a chapter of Job and pray with her. And she would get to singing because she was one of them old saints that could sing amazing grace. How Amen. sweet the sound that Amen. saved a wretch like me. Amen. I was yes. lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I yeah, see. I see. She could sing uh, that song. Must Jesus bear yeah. the cross oh, alone and all the world go no, free? No, there's a cross for <laughs> everyone and there's a cross <laughs> for me. And she could sing. I'm all right, Miss Liz. Jesus, <laughs> all of my trouble. I, I must tell Jesus, oh, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. And I noticed as I was going from week to week and day to day, the woman seemed to be getting stronger. The doctors would come in with all types of new information and wonder how she was getting better. And she began to tell them, you just wait on the Lord. He will okay. work a miracle on my behalf. <laughs> And Lord, after about 30 days, I, I, I went in and the woman didn't have the bag no more. And the woman didn't need her colon cut out. And the woman's stomach was operating just fine. And she said, Rem, I smell some black eyed peas and collard greens. I, I smell some, some chicken. I, I'm ready to eat up in here. And they came and took the sun out of her shoulder. What I'm trying to say is because the woman accepted the will of God for her life and decided she was going to trust in the Lord and have yeah. faith in the Lord. She came out. Oh, yeah. Came out of that hospital. Yes, Victoria yes. came out yes. eating and singing and shouting. Oh, yeah. And as far as I know, she's still eating today. She's still giving right. God praise Somebody. because the Lord has done great. That's what the scripture said. The Lord has done Lord. great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. She was glad to be of service, to bring glory to God. The doctor got saved. Hallelujah. The nurses got saved because this woman's testimony was there is nothing impossible for Jesus. And she stood on the promises of God. I want to tell somebody that no matter what comes against you, have joy and have let the joy. joy of the Lord be your strength. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. This is Advent season. Let the joy of the Lord cover you no matter what you're going through. Sing a song if you don't know one, learn one. <laughs> learn something you can get down in your sanctified Amen. Learn one you can sing. As the preacher sang this morning, I wish 
somebody here would catch on fire. fire <laughs> Of the Holy Ghost, I wish somebody on this live would catch on fire and let the devil know, devil, you can't push me around anymore. I'm going to trouble my trouble with praise, and God is going to deliver me from anything you send my way. That's the kind of God we have Boy. in the Advent season. Joy to the world. Amen. The Lord is come. Amen. I want to invite you today. Great message, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Great message, Reverend. I want you to know today Amen. that's the kind of God we serve. Many have lost loved ones during this pandemic. I received a call. One of my best friends passed on last Thursday, and they had a grave site uh, yesterday. She worked for me when I was in the military. We became great friends, Jerry Austin, and, and it hurt me to the core. But her granddaughter said, it's going to be all right, God daddy. It's going to be all right. And as I thought about her and her life, and she was always on oxygen because she had a respiratory disease. Sometimes she couldn't even catch her breath. She would be coughing and gagging even with the oxygen on. And the last time I saw her, we couldn't even hardly talk to each other. All we could do is utter a prayer. And she would say to me, Earl, you know I'm trusting the Lord. He know what he's doing. And she would light up. I tell you, there's joy in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Joy makes God's people go through some insufferable things, people that the world couldn't even handle. But her testimony was, God knows what he's doing. And I'm oh, yeah. trusting in him. And, and I'm so glad that she knew him and that God was the center of her life. So this morning, I'm inviting you, the invitation is to receive the joy of the Lord as your strength. Accept whatever situation you're in with gladness and gratefulness, but dream a new dream. I often tell people when you dream something negative, open your mouth and rebuke it and change it. Mm -hmm. Change the script. Be like Hezekiah when he got that word that he was fitting to die. He went his turn, his face to the wall. God gave him 15 more years. Because he accepted what God said, but then he dreamed a new dream. He dreamed more time, and God gave him more time. I, I love you today. I pray God's best for you today. And if you're on the call and don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, I pray that you will confess your sins, that you will believe that God sent Jesus into the world to suffer and die for your sins and that you would see, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Praise because God. when Jesus Praise comes God. into your life, you're stronger than you know. Oh, you yes. don't need to know. He'll show up, and there'll be a smile on your face. God oh, bless yes. you today. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for these, your people. I ask you to continue to bless them and continue to keep them. And whatever situation they're facing, Lord, give them a song. Give them a song in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I know they say, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? But you can make it so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.